What's going on, guys? Welcome to our brand new Sweet Film Podcast. My name is Zach. And my name is Cody. And today we're discussing the highs and lows of the Conjuring franchise because this weekend the scary ass nun looks to be coming out. Hopefully it's scary. I'm not, I don't have much hope for the film, but I'm hoping it lives up to that potential. But we're talking about the highs and lows of the Conjuring universe. Plus, me and Cody have been wanting to talk about more video games on here. So we're also gonna bring talking about the scariest video games we've ever played. But before we get into this, we do have a great guest joining us, and that is Ren from over at Ren Geekness. How are you doing, man? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me all the way across the pond, as we just mentioned. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. I wanted to be on on the video with you guys for so long, and I don't get the nun this weekend, but I still want to talk about it. Hey, it's still worse. We'll all talk about it. Then when you see the nun, you can tell us what you thought of it. Or, guys, of course, go subscribe to him, which his link will be down in the bio, and then you guys can see all of his great movie reviews over there. But um, before we get into this, I get to know I know how Ren's doing. How are you doing, Cody, on this lovely morning in Arizona for me, but kind of afternoon for you? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's going well. Um, we're still. I'll say this: I love your background. I love your background. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Deadpool and Cable say hi, but. Yeah, no, Maine's fine. Maine's good. It's uh, it's like ninety degrees with seventy percent humidity here, so uh, it's okay. But you know, I'm, as far as the nun is concerned, with all this stuff, and first of all, thanks to everybody who showed up to the Sweet Film Podcast, and thanks to everybody who's seen the second episode of Entertainment Wars. It's getting, it's getting a lot of people to see it right now. I believe we're at over a hundred people. Uh, close to 150 people who have seen it. So thank you to everybody who's seen it so far. Thank you so much for showing up. It really means a lot for all the support that you give us for the podcast and for all the projects that Zach and I do. But as far as the nun is concerned, when it comes to this movie, I always put it into two categories. I don't think it's going to be as good as any of the Conjuring films. However, for me, I think it's either going to be this year's Annabelle, which we all know that movie was a complete another bus fire. Or it'll be this year's Annabelle creation. And if, if it's just like Annabelle creation where it's just a fun a, a fun horror movie, I'll be okay with that. Yeah, I'm same too. But I guess we'll talk more about the preview and preview the nun a little bit. So let's just start with the Conjuring universe. Let's get to the highs and lows. This will be a great discussion. And of course, starting back in G 2013, we're bringing into the Conjuring. This is the very first one in the series. I remember when this film's coming out, the trailers had me hooked, but I was not really excited for it. And then buzz started coming out about it, and I was like, okay, the, the buzz is there. And I remember going at midnight to see this film. I had to sneak into the theater because I was not 17 yet out here. And <laughs> me and my friends snuck in a theater at a midnight showing, and we were fucking scared. We were fucking scared. Now, I don't think this film is as scary. I, I think it does hold up, but like after you've seen this film like 300 times, because I've seen this film tons of times, I know where everything's at, so it's not as scary to me, and nothing really catches me off guard, but it's still a very unsettling movie, and I've read the books on the whole Warrens. I've read all their cases and stuff. I'm like a huge Warren fanatic. I love all that type of stuff, and I think The Conjuring really grabbed that. They they, they only changed a couple things. Really, they changed how like long the ghosts were there. They changed uh, the background history on Bathsheba, or whatever the girl's name was. Um, and they changed some stuff on that, but overall, like it was actually still the definitive story. And I like that they didn't change too much on the true story. And I mean, who, who doesn't um, remember that, that, that is like one of the most iconic scenes from a trailer and a movie. But I remember getting home from the conjuring and we got home at three in the morning, which is the same time that that fucking oh, clocks God. would stop at conjuring. And my friend had a oh, grandfather yeah. clock at their house and it fucking went off right when we went through the door. And I'm not joking. We almost shit our pants, almost <laughs> shit our fucking <laughs> pants. So, but with Ren being our guest, Ren, I want to hear your thoughts. Cause you did tell me you have some unpopular opinions about this thing when I grabbed you. <laughs> <laughs> all right so conjuring one came out in 2013 as you said i didn't see this movie in theaters okay. i was not interested the film did not look good to me and then as you said the buzz came out everyone was raving about this film and i was like this is strange but i'm going to wait for the hype to die down so i waited and waited and it wasn't until like january of the year following that that I watched The Conjuring for the first time. I bought it, I put the Blu-ray on my PlayStation, I watched it and I was like, that was fine. 
That wow. was an above. No, not even above. That was an average horror film. I was have you not seen it again since? Least, have you seen it again since? No, no. That was that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Maybe no. watching it again would <laughs> would enhance the viewing experience. But I have not been interested in watching it ever since. Hell, I haven't even bought The Conjuring Two, which I really enjoy on Blu-ray okay. right? because my OCD will make me want to buy the first one, which I don't like. So I don't want to buy the second one. See, and that's how I am. That You're like me with yeah. the OCD thing. Like, I own Suicide Squad. Why? I don't fucking know, because I have mm. Justice League, I have Man of Steel, I have Wonder Woman. It's an OCD thing. The only franchise I haven't done it yet, and it's because I refuse to spend 20 bucks for each one, is Cars. I have Cars 1, and I have Cars 3. <laughs> Do I want Cars 2? No, but oh, every time I, go, I look through my collection, I see Cars 1 and Cars 3. It bothers the fuck out of me. Like, horribly. Horribly. So, oh, but Cody, I know you're a big fan of the Conjuring franchise. So, what is your thoughts on the very oh. first one? Oh, yeah. No, I I love the first Conjuring movie. I've My first experience with it was... Uh, it was like a year or two ago. Like Every Ren, I didn't... first experience, I think we're talking about, like, sex stories. So, the first yeah, time I found you. about sex... <laughs> was third grade when I was going through a little anime book and I found a naked lady. Oh, you know, it's... Well, with we tentacles. Do a, we, with tentacles. We do have a Pretty podcast much, no where joke, we dude, talk about that stuff. Her butt. Okay, this is too much. Keep <laughs> yeah, I would say so. If you guys want to hear more about sex and movies, we also have a podcast episode for that. So you should go check that out. But The Conjuring... I want to be in that one. We'll make another one. We'll make another one, run. <laughs> The first Conjuring movie, <gasps> anime I, porn. I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys think there's a Conjuring porno? Like a Conjuring spinoff oh, porno? Oh, dude, I'm sure there is. I'm looking it up right now. Oh conjuring God. porn. <laughs> oh okay, so. Yep. Not See, quickly that's <laughs> Okay. So you Conjuring sick. fuck with sexy but yet demonic nun. What? <laughs> Why isn't it demonic but yet sexy? Okay, that oh my oh oh my god, that's fucking scary. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> Literally, it's the same it's like someone did the makeup of the nun and she had like something in her mouth. I'm not gonna say what it is because we might get demonetized, but she was on her knees. I'll just put it there. <laughs> But go on, Cody. <laughs> okay. So, I love the first Conjuring film. I've seen it multiple times. And what I can say is, like Ren, I did not see the film in the theater. But I made the mistake. I was lying in my bed. It was 8 o'clock at night. I saw The Conjuring on Netflix. And I decided to watch it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. You just watched this, didn't you? Like, for the first time. Not that long ago. Well, when I say it, it was about, like, six to six to eight months ago. Yeah. I remember you texting me, and I okay. thought you'd already seen the film. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Um. So, let's just say after watching that, I probably didn't get to bed till 2 a.m. Because I was afraid to fall asleep in my bed. But <laughs> I, I, I've seen it a few more times since then. And I've, you know, I've seen all the rest of the other Conjuring films up until this point. So, yeah, I love the first Conjuring film. I think it's a brilliant movie. I think it's a great horror film. So, yeah. And that's why I think Ren should revisit. I think if Ren revisit, I think it might bump up for him because I've had those same things where I'll watch a film and then like years down the road, I watch it again. I'm like, oh, that was not as bad um i don't remember what film that there's a horror oh um insidious uh so in, i actually had the reverse effect when i first time i saw insidious 2 i freaking thought it was the dumbest thing in the world that was horrible and i always used to think the first one was fantastic and then I, I dated this one girl who wanted to do a marathon of all of them before the third one came out and i hate the first one now and i love the second one and i actually Funny. i rewatched the second one like every couple months i really like the second one Funny you should give those as examples because I 
I actually just watched the three Insidious movies before the new one came out this year. Oh, really? Do you like them? Do you like them? I, the first one, I thought it was watchable. I fucking loved the second one. Yeah, see, that's yeah. I And mm. I like the third one. Yeah, no. The first one, I almost got kicked out of the theater because I was one of those kids. I was okay. the only, it, it was just me, my friend. We were on a double date and then there was like one other person in the theater. And so we were just like mm. laughing to each other. But like, I, 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 looking back, I was a dick, but I was just, <laughs> it was because I was scared. So you see the little kid dancing. Okay. I got up and started fucking dancing because I thought it was funny. Ooh. You know, but funny okay. I don't do that anymore because I I would bitch the shit out of someone if someone did that to me. I mean, it's funny enough that you mention the Insidious films because the individual who directed the Conjuring films also directed the first few yeah. or first couple of Insidious movies. James mm-hmm. Wan. Well, James Wan's a it. he's a master director. I I think he's fantastic. Yeah. I actually have his Funko Pop somewhere over there. He is. I think he's one of the best directors working today, hands down. Like oh, his yeah. direction with Absolutely. the conjuring is perfect. Like top ten? Yeah, yeah I, I, say, I was put right, in the top right 10. now. Yeah. I'm not saying like of all time, but top ten for yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Working right yeah. now, he's up there because I I think his direction, even with his like weaker films, his direction is always strong. Like I don't think Dead Silence is a good movie, but didn't he direct it? I'm pretty sure he directed yeah. Dead Silence, and he I did. And he's the yes. direction in there's pretty solid. Um, Insidious again, those aren't the best, but and they're soft. solid. Saw the first saw Jesus that that was like a fantastic that those really films still holds love up. it but guys yeah. let's move on to 2014 because oh we gosh a brilliant spinoff that came out called uh, Annabelle do we have to so Ren from you saying that I'm guessing you don't like this film this isn't the real one. Oh no I thought it was so you thought so it was shit. awesome right <sighs> but it's just, this film I, I was like Zach. I didn't get up, but I did watch this one in theaters. I didn't get up or anything. I did, I did. I never did that thing of being loud in the theater, but I tried so hard for the entire runtime of the movie, by the way, to hold my laughs in because I saw everybody be like, <gasps> and I was like, <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. No, laugh. I get you on that. Mm. Oh man, this film. Two hours of torture. Can I say oh, one thing so though? Bad. Let me get my pro. I think the That's basement scene's sure. great. The basement yes. scene's great. Awesome. That sequence. The basement was- scene's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I just think it's great because. I agree on that. Sucks. No, I agree with you on that one. Let's be honest though. Is it only good because the rest of the movie sucked? Probably. <laughs> I don't. I I think it has it genuinely has its value. Genuinely okay. has its merits. I think it's yeah, I don't know what happened with this movie. Not impressive, but a cool scene. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I mean, happened. With I don't this know movie. who directed this movie. Uh, John R. Lynette. I have no idea who that is. Okay, me neither. I was like, who the fuck is he? <laughs> Leonetti. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I don't even was know. Was the cinematographer of The Conjuring? That's oh. why. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. The man else... went on to direct Wish Upon, guys. So... Oh, my God. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <sighs> you know what? Here's the other thing. If you notice, James Wan had barely anything to do with the Annabelle movie. Oh, yeah. I wonder I why. <laughs> I wouldn't want anything to do with it either. Yeah, no. Also... Annabelle is... It's so bad. It's... <laughs> It's hard to believe that we go from something so expertly crafted, such as The Conjuring, and then we get Annabelle, which, okay, no no shame in saying it here since I just caught up with the, the Conjuring films in the past eight months, but the fact of the matter is this. Annabelle is a horrendously done movie, and halfway through the movie, I almost fell asleep. I think I fell asleep oh, I for like asleep. a good 15 mo- minutes of the movie. See, I can't blame you. I didn't see this film in the theaters because I didn't want to. Like, I saw the oh, reviews God. and I was like, yeah, I'm not seeing that. And then I ended up renting it. And man, it's so I was bad. just like, this isn't even fucking. None of it makes sense sometimes. Nope. No. But I will give it this. If you watch. Mm-hmm. This is a spoiler podcast for people who have not seen the Conjuring franchise. Other than the Nun, none of us have seen the Nun, so we don't know what happens in the Nun. Yeah. 
I and mean, we'll talk about Annabelle creation a little bit more when we get there. But let me say this. Annabelle mm -hmm. creation enhances this film just a little bit. Not a lot, but it does make it a little bit more yeah. understanding of what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I will give yeah. the film that i think it was really smart and how it tied in because let's be honest when annabelle creation ended i my mouth dropped my mouth dropped yeah mine but too mine we'll too. talk about that I in really a second like that. i think annabelle we can just skip over mm -hmm. fuck this movie oh before we move on from annabelle i have a very interesting fact about annabelle as we were talking about the director in the beginning i just found out that the man who directed annabelle also directed mortal kombat's annihilation gentlemen <laughs> your thoughts so this man directed Annabelle, Mortal Kombat, Annihilation, right? Yeah, yeah. also known as one of the worst movies ever made. And he directed Wish Upon. And he was the cinematographer yep. for The Conjuring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some tell me the actress had I to mean, he can it. make shit look good. I guess we can agree with that. I mean, oh, Cody, have been saying this though. Lane Winnell, director of Upgrade, he is friends with James Wan. If he does not do the Mortal Kombat reboot film, I am not watching it. Yeah, I'm and sorry, of, but it's come oh, on. Speaking really? of yeah. speaking of horror things, Zach and I also agreed that if Resident, if James Wan actually does, if he himself directs a Resident Evil movie, we want lay Winnell to take care of the action in the resident well, evil movie well he's producing the new resident evil oh, films yeah. that they're making so i i have a feeling james Wan, really yeah he's producing it's supposed to be based off like uh, the new ones they're doing right now so but oh, i'm curious cool. uh, ren did you see upgrade yeah i just saw it actually it's okay so what do you think of the action the action is great. I mean, I love the movie until literally the last two minutes see that's how me and cody were and that's i mean Cody were. All right, yeah. and if we're gonna and talk, I, and about... I called what was going to happen at like twenty minutes in, I knew the reveal was going to be it. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil yeah. it for other people. And uh, speaking of the action that was in Upgrade, yeah. there is uh, there's the first action scene. I think for me is personally one of the oh, most memorable. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. maybe yeah. The, well, that's maybe the one the that I was like, scene. he has the job for Mortal Kombat right there. Yeah, but yeah. we're actually talking about a horror franchise. And the next film to come out in the series was actually The Conjuring 2. Two years later. Coincidence on that. So, Cody, I'm going to let you take this one off. What do you think of The Conjuring 2? The Conjuring 2 does something very rare when it comes to horror films. It not only produced a horror sequel that was interesting, but it also produced a horror sequel that was actually good and i think that's partially because james wan was still on board and he still had his story he wanted to tell with the warrens and the conjuring 2 i think i don't necessarily think it's as good as the first one is but i do think that as far as a horror movie i think the scares are more terrifying than what they were in the first really film. yeah but either way, either way you slice it, I thoroughly loved The Conjuring 2. I think it's, well, well, without a doubt, it is one of the best horror sequels to come out in a long time because it's it's good. And we all know that horror sequels generally are never good. It's rare that they ever are. Okay, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts, Ren. What did you think of The Conjuring 2? I, I love Conjuring 2. Really? I think it's so much better than the sec than See, the first one. Damn, I'm gonna be. The I adore lady. the small house. I adore the small house. I adore how terrifying the children are because the main little girl is fucking frightening. <laughs> then also, I love the environment they created, mm -hmm. and literally apart from the scene. In the train near the end, when the Warrens are going away, and then they decide, "Oh no, let's go back and solve this." Uh, and the scene where you literally see the name of the nun, Valak, formed in little pieces multiple times, Those multiple times. Things that didn't work for me. See, I but love. I how... fucking love the atmosphere. I fucking love. I love how he he makes basically the house, the environment that the characters are in, a character. Mm -hmm. And Flanagan also did that with the nun, the not the nun, sorry, the Annabelle creation. 
And Juan also did that with Insidious 2, which is why I like it more than the first one as well. See, so this is where I'm at with Conjuring 2. I thought it was fine. Um, I didn't think it was, like, amazing. I didn't think it was, like... I thought it was good. Like, I, I thought it was good. I definitely liked the first one more. I think my issue with the second one is it's way too long for me. I, I think it's way too long for a horror film. And I think there's something you could have cut out. And another thing that does make me... So, again, like I said earlier, I'm a big Warrens fan. Like, I love all their stuff. The true story of this is a lot of bullshit. Like, they embellish... And I get it. Like, they embellish a lot. But I hated how much they went away from the first one. They really did embellish a lot for the second one. Like, the nun's never a real thing. Um, Annabelle's a true thing. But An the nun was never a real thing. And it, there's so much... You'd have to dig into, like, the actual stuff that goes on. But I think, for me... I think the nun is a cool addition. I think it's awesome uh, that it was reshoots. It was a reshot thing. Like, really? I, yeah, you didn't know that. Oh, so the crooked no. man was originally the main villain, and they went back okay. and reshot it all to be the nun. Yeah, because like the twist caught me off guard. Yeah. So, yeah. isn't that crazy how that works? Ooh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, even crazier is that the fact that I mean, in the narrative, it works at least for me. Oh yeah, it really works. So the fact that it was all reshot was another insane. Villain. And I even like the Crooked Man. I know a lot of people do not like the Crooked Man and his CGI. The CGI need to be touched up a fuck ton. But the Crooked yeah. Man, I thought he was cool for what he was. But I thought that old man, yeah. that was creepy. Like the stuff oh, the television yeah. remote. I think that's the most freakiest scene is when she's at home alone because we've yeah. all been there. We've all had that kind of stuff. And the Conjuring Two yeah. for me, I think, delve deeper into these characters. And delve deeper into this universe. And that's why I'm still surprised that there is no announcement for a third one. None whatsoever. They want, they want to see if this none works. Because if it works out like the rest of the franchise has worked out for me, I'm going to hate the first none. And I'm going to <laughs> like an eventual second the none movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if this first none fails, they're going to announce a Conjuring, a Conjuring 3 before the none 2. Yeah, yeah. I the embargo I mean, is pretty bad for the I, nun. But I remember a little while ago there was talks of of a Conjuring three, and the more I think about it, the concept that they had then, I I, I just do you remember? Do you remember the idea? Yeah, it was about bringing werewolves into the which equation. is awesome, dude. That case what? that they do is seriously look at the Warrens werewolf case when you're done. It is insane. Uh, is, is it really? Insane? And it's okay. and it's very. I don't. They'll obviously have to embellish a lot of stuff, but I think that's the right direction to go. Get away from the demon stuff. Go into that. That's an actual true case that they dealt with, and it is insane. Oh wow! Think about it. If they if they mix like American werewolf or what is what American the, horse? American story? werewolf. No, 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 not horse. Run, got it. The American werewolf in London. That one. If yeah. they build that psychological tension within the Conjuring universe, I think that'd be great. I think that'd be awesome, and I think that's the best way to bring them in. You know what I mean? Obviously, they'll embellish it a bit, and they'll probably actually make it like more of a werewolf, but mm. I'm sorry, but I would want that. The only thing that worries me is the writer of the film. That's the only thing that worries about me, because the guy who's writing the third one, he wrote... Mm. <sighs> The Orphan, okay. Wrath of the Titan. Oh, you didn't like that? Okay. Oh, gosh. Wrath of the... Conjuring 2, which, okay. And he okay. wrote Aquaman. So, he's... I think Wrath of the Titan is the one that scares me okay. a little bit. I but really like The Orphan. I did, too. So, that's why I'm like, okay, okay. We'll see how Aquaman goes, but so yeah, he is he is writing the new Conjuring three. So hopefully they get that in development soon. But guys, let's talk about 2017 because Annabelle Creation yes. comes out this year. And I okay. my experience with this movie was I had seen a trailer. I said it looked bad. I am a big fan of David F. Sandberg after Lights Out and all of his short films. I I think the guy's a genius. I cannot wait for Lights Out. Like literally, I would love to sit down and talk with this guy. I I'm Dr. such Sleep, a big fan man. of dude Doctor Sleep. No, that's a uh, Mike Flanagan. This is Sandberg, man. Oh wait, separate guys. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. He's the one who's them. But Flanagan's oh, gonna fuck. touch me, man. Yeah. I he he makes me want to touch myself every time I watch one of his films in a real <laughs> fucked up way. <laughs> but <laughs> David F. Sandberg, dude. I mean, oh, this man. guy is like he has such a good success. I I like Lights yeah. Out. 
And then Annabelle I Creation. I just remember. So I got an early screen of this. I was sitting there. I went to go see it. One, I was pissed because there's so many little kids in this R-rated film. So many. Oh, God. Trying kids. But oh, God. The film was so scary to me. It didn't even matter because this film scared the shit out of me. This I was actually scared of this movie. I think it is so much fun. I, it's not like I went home and I was scared, like psychologically, but in the moment, yeah. I was scared. And I think yeah. Annabelle Creation is fantastic. I, I think it's one of the best films in the Conjuring universe. I think it's probably the second best, to be honest. And I think it's probably yeah, the most fun. To me too. I love all the little nods, the nun nod in the picture. That's awesome. Like that little Easter egg in there made me jump out of my seat. The after credit scene. It, it, this is how it should have been. And again, like I said, it enhances the original Annabelle because th when the ending comes about and you see that it's the original Annabelle, my jaw dropped. Because at first I didn't understand what was yeah. happening. I was like, wait, I'm confused. Those people look familiar. What's going on? Oh my God. Oh my God. She woke up. Holy shit. And it makes yeah. me wonder, did they always plan on this? Not until after the the first Annabelle failed, I think. At least uh, critically. See, and that's why, but, but for me, it's like the first Annabelle, it never made sense with the cult. It never made sense. Yeah. So that's why it's like this one makes total sense now, but... Brent, tell me, what's your, what's your thoughts about Annabelle Creation? Oh, man, I had so much fun with with Annabelle Creation. First of all, let's say I really like this movie, but let me point out the, the, the one big flaw. Because I actually already had a channel when this came out, but I just chose not to review it for some reason. Maybe I was feeling lazy. And you can call the, the scares in this movie. That's the weakest point of it. But the atmosphere that Sandberg yes. creates... He just has these long takes, steady cam shots. He walks around the house. He makes you observe everything. So you can see where stuff is going to come in. And because you understand that he does that on purpose, you have so much fun with that. You sit there just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then it catches character X or character Y from the dark. Boom. I love that moment. It's pretty early on where... The, the 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 demon comes from under the stairs and pushes oh. the girl to oh. the ceiling and then downstairs. It's so fucking great. I was in a group of like eight people watching that movie. We all were calling it, but yet one person <laughs> screamed and like scratched my friend's arm so much. Those are the best. <laughs> he was like bleeding best. after that. I mean, and yeah. we were basically laughing about her. Holy cow, you know, <clears throat> talking about this, I kind of want to sit down and watch Annabelle Creation again. No, oh, I'm yeah. just being honest. It's great. I've seen it's it just, twice and I, I really enjoy but, it. But one of my favorite scenes from yeah, if you couldn't already tell, I, I really enjoyed Annabelle Creation. It was actually funny enough, if you saw I thought it was smart. I think it was the op that was also when I saw the little little clip of it that they were showing a month beforehand and the month before Zach and I officially oh, met. Yeah. But but Annabelle Creation, I thought it was a fun movie. Yeah, the, there were a lot of horror cliches in Annabelle Creation. There's no deny. But one thing that it does is we finally got – we actually got a great Conjuring prequel and a, gr and a really fun Annabelle film which that's the best part. And what I think it might be my favorite scene as far as horror is concerned is when the little, the little orphan girl on crutches, because if it's not a wheelchair, it's going to be crutches, but she goes inside. She goes inside of Annabelle's room. She doesn't know it's Annabelle's room, yeah. but then, but then the place where Annabelle is kept opens up and you just see the doll sitting there. That is, yeah. in my opinion, there is no amount of, of suspense or atmosphere core that is captured in the rest of the movie than in that one scene. The way that was put together was so brilliant. And one of my favorite things is looking at the behind the scenes stuff. It, it's apparent that they may have used a lot of color correction because they did a lot of oh, filming yeah. in the daytime. Well, so this. it's funny. So if you guys haven't check out David of Sandberg's uh, YouTube channel, um, he actually goes really? to the death of how he does all the special effects. He does a lot of the special effects himself. So you know the the when the body's like hanging and there's blood dripping on the floor. Yeah, yeah. He did all that at home. That was post production. He literally took a picture of like a wall in his house and just color corrected it. 
He is oh, like, wow. dude, it, his YouTube channel is insane because he has all these behind the scenes videos of Annabelle. He has all these behind the scenes of Lights Out. And he like, all in Lights Out again, Um, you know, when all the words on the wall, when she has the black light, he did all that in post. Yes. That was all him. Oh, that, wow. that was, wow. He just took the movie home and did that himself. So he like, that's why I really like this guy. And I cannot wait to see what the guy does with Shazam. I don't know if he'll get yeah. to do videos like that on Shazam since Shazam's like a more higher budgeted film, but I, I, I just, I love Annabelle Creation. All the subtle nods mm. to the Conjuring universe is in there. Everything is just so weaved in there perfectly, in my opinion. It's not a perfect movie, but it's a great horror fun film. Like, it's a great film to yeah. sit people around and watch and enjoy. And, yeah. It's a great now, Halloween movie. Yeah. So, before we get talking about The Nun, I do want to talk about two of the other films that they are coming out within the Conjuring universe. Our, obviously, we've already talked about The Conjuring 3 with The Werewolf. Yeah. But I want to talk to, about the next Annabelle film. Have you guys heard about this film at all? Because I'm going to tell you guys. No. The premise. That's no? what I was going to ask you. Like when we were talking about Conjuring 3, I was about to ask, and isn't there an Annabelle 3 announced or something? Because I'm so, not sure. There is an, they just announced it at Comic-Con this year or ScareCon. Like that's, that's like uh, right now. Okay. Now. Okay. It's directed by Gary Doberman, who has been the writer on almost every single thing in the Conjuring universe. And he also wrote, okay. um, and I'm pretty sure he wrote it. Let me check real fast. Oh, I'm okay. Sure, I'm pretty sure he wrote Gary it. Gary Dobberman. Yes, he wrote it. He wrote both chapters of it. Nice. He wrote, nice. He's written wow. everything pretty much. Like ever since the, the first Annabelle, he's written everything for the Conjuring yeah. universe. Well, they have a great writer on board. That's for yeah, sure. So, yeah. But he's also directing it. First time director. Okay. Which, I, I, which I'm not as scared because James Wan is like, I guess, actually like really hands on with this next Annabelle film. I certainly hope so. And are you guys ready to hear what it's going to be? What is he it? All this, right. James Wan specifically calls this next Annabelle film Nightmare at the Museum. Because he compares the whole film to Night at the Museum where it's all about the, oh. the Annabelle film taking place in the future in the Warren's house with the with like the dolls and her bringing everything to life and it from what i understand is that ed and lorraine will be in the film but they will not be a main part it'll be the daughter wow okay that sounds honestly once again that's an idea that's an, with the team they've got behind them i don't think it's going to be a film that will encapsulate the magic that the first conjuring film did i just don't i don't think it'll be i'm a glad they're going in a different direction though that's yeah, why I really like that too. idea. I do think, honestly, I do think this will be, I do think that this will be another really fun Annabelle film. I mean, that's what I'm getting from the premise. It sounds like it's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, no, so I'm, wonder, I'm excited for that. I wonder if it could be like, a, have you guys seen Black Mirror the last season? I, I've never I'm going to be Black honest. Uh, last season, yes. Last season I watched, yes. Okay. Okay, so the episode, the final episode, Black Museum with Shuri from Black Panther. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So if it's that, but like in a Annabelle, in a Annabelle scenario, that would be insane. If they go rated R, especially. Oh, it'll be rated R. Almost yeah, every I film mean, in this franchise has been rated R. So. I hope so. Actually, I think every yeah, film in the franchise has been rated R. Yeah, I was actually surprised to look yeah, back I and know, see what the but... first Annabelle was because I didn't think it was mm. rated R. Yeah, no, it's. But uh, as we've already stated, the 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 first Annabelle movie is crap. But <laughs> yes, it yes. is. But, okay, so do we want to start previewing the Nun? The last thing I want to bring up is the Crooked Man. Are you guys wanting to see this film? Oh yeah. If I tell it. now, if I throw in that James Wan wrote the story for it, will that make you excited? Yes, yeah. it makes me want to see it. <laughs> not ex not excited because it's just the story, not the screenplay. But I am more confident because they at least have a solid, or what I like to believe is a solid basis for it. True, true on that part. But I but don't yeah, know. I would need to. Part. I would need to hear what it is about. Actually, not just crooked men, and that doesn't. Yeah. That it's not enough for me. Now I, I guarantee that none doesn't do good. They're not going to make the crooked man. Yeah, no. Oh, God. Yeah. No, seriously, they will go straight back to Conjuring 3 if none doesn't do good. Yeah. Because yeah. I look at this film franchise, and it's a billion-dollar franchise, which is – that's awesome. That's awesome to see it's a billion-dollar franchise. But So, guys, True. let's preview The Nun. I want each of us to just go through. What do we expect from it? What do we want from it? 
and just make one wild prediction about the film. Uh, Ren, I'm going to have you start with us since, again, you're our guest. Okay. So I've only seen the first teaser. That's the this. only trailer there is. <laughs> oh. yep. That makes you feel better. Yeah, there's like nothing else for this film. Which means they've already shown us everything. Cool. Uh, also, I've only seen each of the Conjuring movies, even the ones I like, once. So, what I want from The Nun is for the twist to actually be that it is Mark Riley from Schmoes No and Collided. No, I'm kidding. So, what I want from what I want from The Nun is I want atmosphere. I want us to go down into those underground tunnels beneath the church, which seem to be in the trailer, where it's all foggy and the 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 actual nun, not as in the cursed nun, the actual nun is there and you see the nun behind her, she looks, and then there's another nun. I thought that was very creative. That caught me off guard. And I want the movie to be entirely like that. It feeds on the cliche and then turns it around. And if I'm going to make a wild prediction, I'm going to say the crooked man is in this film. With a big role, actually. At least bigger than a cameo. A big role? Or do you think just yeah. a small role? Kind of how like the nun was an Annabelle creation. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't say not that big a role, but I, I, no, I wouldn't say, I would say it's much bigger than that. It's not a cameo, it's not just one scene. He is imp he's actually important to the story. That's how I'll put it. Okay. Uh, Cody, you, what about you? Okay, my wild prediction, or no, uh, I'll get to that in a sec, but what I want is the same thing as Ren. I just want a fun, because like I said, I don't think this is going to be anything. I don't think this is going to be anything as good as the, as the Conjuring films. I, no. I I don't. I am expecting a fun, atmospheric horror film, and I think them playing in an old Romanian church building where you have all that religious uh, symbolism in a building that is just so so dark and so and so haunting. I I something atmospheric. I think will be the best thing for this movie, and obviously it feels as though we're going to be getting good performance in here and. My wild prediction, I think I think that The Nun, I think it's going to tie into the first Conjuring film somehow. I'm not sure well, how. The, oh. for Vera Farmiga, isn't her daughter in this? To Thaisa Farmiga? Let me check. Let me I'm pretty, check. I know she's in it, but I know they're related. I don't know if it's her daughter or her sister Good or something. One. No, she is, a, she is Vera's, Vera Farmiga's daughter. Okay. okay then. Is she playing a younger version of her? That's the thing I'm like, Sister Irene. No, no, that's no, no, what no, her no. name is, but she's not a younger version. Yeah, of her. Sister Irene. Yeah. No, okay, no. well, okay. How about this? It, it's going to. Okay, wait. She's the younger sister of Vera Farmiga. Okay, oh. then yes, it's obviously going to connect at some point. So yeah. Uh, okay, I'll I'll scrap no, I mean, that I mean, prediction and herself. I'll say another one. No, I'll say that. Well, yeah, the as actress, far as the... but I mean, why would you get the yeah. younger version of her? If it's not going to connect mm -hmm. to the first Conjuring film. Exactly. So, all right. I guess my wild prediction is I think we're going to get a connection or a tie-in into definitely into future films down the road, but I think we're going to get a tie-in. I guess I'll go with what Ren's saying. I think we might have a tie-in with the Crooked Man in here. So you guys want to hear something? So what? Wanda's okay. discussed, I'm reading this right now. Juan discussed the possibility for a non-sequel and what its storyline may cover. I do not know. I do know where its potential, if the nun works out, where the nun two could lead to, and how that ties back to Lorraine's story that we've set up in the first two conjurings. Make it all come full circle. Ah, uh, okay. So this one wouldn't mm -hmm. uh, connect to conjuring. Okay. But I, okay, oh, now, man, I'm, now I'm reading. So the director originally did not want to cast Taisa for me uh, because they were related, mm -hmm. but he changed his mind after seeing the audition. Okay. So okay, maybe they actually sense. aren't related. Maybe they just, you know what I mean? She got the role. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, That'd if she funny. did it all on the audition, that makes me that, excited. That would make sense. That would make sense. It could just be like, because I mean, they're related. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where that goes. But for me, the nun, I just want a really good atmospheric film. I'm not expecting to get scared. I'm not expecting to jump out of my seat and shit my pants. I'm just expecting a good atmospheric film. Like Annabelle creation. Yes. 
And I'm also hoping for a good story. I don't care if it's mm. like not scary. Like, oh, I want it to be scary, but not like super scary. I just don't want an Annabelle. Like literally just don't want a, a first Annabelle. Mm. I want a, like an, a decent horror film, but I should expect more of that from the Conjuring universe. So that's what I'm hoping from um, the directors and new time director. He's only done a short film and uh, I've heard it's pretty good. I haven't watched no, it, but no. I heard it's like fix that Gothic stuff. Is it a short film? No, he's done a full, fe oh, the a full feature. Never yeah. seen it. Looks pretty good, to be honest. Okay. Then, fuck, hopefully. I haven't seen it. But I know the guy started his uh, career in special effects and monster making. So nice. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with this nun. My wild prediction, though. My wild fucking prediction. Right. Vera right, Farmiga is in the that. Movie. Calling it right now. Vera Farmiga is in the film. Doesn't matter. I, I think she's going to be in the film. She'll be in the movie some way, shape, or form. And either, okay. even if it's her telling a flashback or it ends with the Conjuring yeah. 2, with it tying into the Conjuring 2. Yeah. Yeah, because the then, Conjuring 2 is also a pretty well to the first one, right? Yes. In yeah. a sense, okay. yeah, like back and forth. But it, it takes place after the Conjuring 1, but it has flashbacks to the app. So. The, but I'm also with you. I wouldn't be surprised if the Crooked Man shows up because that's supposedly supposed to be the next one. So it would make sense for it to go forward. Yeah. And yeah, so I I think I'm looking forward to that. But let's move on to our next thing before we get going, guys. And that is scariest video games you guys have ever played. Um, Cody, I'm gonna let you start, and then okay. I'll go and then I'll go, and then we'll let Ren go. Well, it would make sense you start with me because okay just the heads up for you guys listening and watching this is you that play fucking games i well that's not true i just haven't played video games in a long time but as you guys may have known i went to see zach over the summer in arizona and he kind of got me back into video games and he touched me <laughs> and he uh, I, I, well guess what buddy so did you <laughs> All right, but he introduced me to a little game called Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And as far as terrifying games, you guys know that The Last of Us is my favorite game of all time. I don't find it that scary. I don't find it that scary of a game. I find it a brilliant game, not a scary one. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, the first time I played it, is one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. And it's because the game is so well developed and so well established that the horror inside the game, it's very atmospheric. It's so it's so well put together. And of course, I really loved all the callbacks and stuff that they had to classic horror movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre to Evil Dead to to so many things. So that's my answer is Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Okay. Do you have moment. any other picks at all? Um, oh, 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 yeah. Um, back in the day, they're not like, you know, PS4 major mainstream games, but the, the two ones I would pick are for honorable mentions are Slender. When it first came out, I played that with some buddies of mine. Oh, in high computer. School. Yeah, I played that with some buddies of mine in high school. That was terrifying. But if we're going to talk about PC games, the other terrifying game is Amnesia. That game is, that game another is creepy. That that's another experience to where it was pretty hard for me to get to sleep at night when I played it. But those are my answers: Resident Evil Seven, Biohazard, Slender, and Amnesia. Awesome. So I'm gonna go now. I have quite a couple to talk about. First, PT. Fuck you, Konami, for direct for um canceling this game because I still own the demo for this. I'm one of the few people that still own this damn game on their PS4. It's a Probably a 13 minute demo, 13, 20 minute demo of what Silent Hill was supposed to be. This is easily one of the creepiest games I've ever played. Atmospherically, all of that, all of it's in there. Check out the demo on YouTube if you can. Check it out and watch it. Um, Until Dawn, a really brilliant horror game. I thought it was really cool. You get to choose your own direction. Yes. I didn't think it was super scary, but the atmosphere again was there. Yeah. Um, You already mentioned Anisha, so I'm not going to talk about it. Dead Space 1 and 2 is amazing the first one is scarier but the second one has some of the best horror stories i've ever been told in a video game i'd be reminisced if i didn't mention silent hill 2 which i will never play again because i scared the shit out of me when i was younger i know another one that you mentioned when i was there you outlast said that 2. yes that's the yeah, one that you were the, talking that's about, that's about gonna mention. so outlast one i thought was very scary but i thought it didn't it lacked in a very 
other departments. Outlast 2 was more effective for me on every other department. I thought Outlast 2 was just insane, especially since it takes place in Arizona. So maybe that's why I'm a little bit more scared of it. But <laughs> other than that, I think the only other game I can really talk about is Condemned. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this game. Yeah. But there's, yeah, Condemned is fucking terrifying. That that game fucked me up. I don't remember if it's the first or the second one, but which everyone had the mannequins that every time you turned around, they had moved. And you turn back around and you turn again, they are moved in a different position. Fuck that thing. Fuck that thing. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. well, what about you, Run Man? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to mention some that you guys have already mentioned, like Condemned, Until Dawn, Fuck Me Up, because it doesn't cut. Like okay, movie. real fast. You have to Tell me, Until that. Dawn, did you, did you save everyone or did you kill most of them off? I killed most of them off. Fuck them. See, no, uh... piss me off, dude. I was I had everyone fucking alive to the last decision. I killed everyone except one person. Really? Who did you keep alive? Uh, the blonde girl, uh, Hayden Pantier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cody, yeah. I really recommend this game. It's like only ten bucks, dude. Yeah. All right, I'll. I'll no, be seriously, so it's ten bucks. It's, it's ten really? bucks, and it's like Telltale, but a horror game. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out. Alrighty. Uh, what else? What else was I going to mention? I think Amnesia is also really good. Fear is really good. Yeah, like F.E.A. E. Yeah. This one is not a horror film, but it can get scary at points. Uh, and it's Splatterhouse. The one that came yeah. off of PS3. Yeah, I remember that game. Yeah. That's a really, a really uh, obscure one. And Little Nightmares. Have you guys played that? No. No, I've heard of it though. It's fucking great. It's so good. I never saw a single trailer for it. I never saw anything about it. I saw the cover when it was a, for sale. I picked it up and it's amazing. I love that I'll game. I'll have to check it out. What's it on? Uh, it's on a PS4. Yeah. Oh, really? What's it, it called? Little Nightmares? And it's also, yeah, Little Nightmares. And it will remind you of it. Like in Real a real way. way. Oh, yeah. I know this game. And it's on the Switch. I might go buy it on the Switch today. All right. Damn. Uh, I know, I'm not sure what price it is right now, but it's. I know there's an okay. Easter egg to it in it, isn't there? There's yeah. a big one, I'm pretty I mean, sure. I saw it on YouTube. Character. He's wearing a raincoat, so. Yeah. All right. I'm down for that. You know what other game that kind of reminds me of is Limbo? Do you guys remember that game, Limbo? Yes. yes, I never yeah. played it, but I know what it is. It is a very dark game, but really cool. Okay. But yeah, I yeah. really like that game. Um, I, And one other game I want to mention for horror games, which if no one's ever played this game, it's called Bioshock. If you don't know what Bioshock is. Oh, yeah. See, I love Bioshock. I loved one, two, and I loved Infinite. Infinite's my favorite, but one is still a horror game for me. That is a horror game. So it has for horror sure. elements to it, but... I think that's where we're going to cut this off, guys. So, again, thank you so much for watching the Sweet Film Podcast and journeying into the highs and lows of the Conjuring universe. As I'm sending everyone off, I want everyone to tell and say what their favorite film in the Conjuring universe is. So, before we get going, Ren, where can they find you at, man? And what is your favorite Conjuring film? Uh, my favorite Conjuring film is Conjuring 2. I think it's the highest this franchise has ever has gotten and will will be the highest one for a while, even after The Nun. And you guys can find me anywhere on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube where I do movie reviews and I share some of my short films sometimes at Ren Geekness. It's always the same name, so you guys don't have to search very hard for it. And I want to thank Zach and Cody for having me on. I can't wait to hopefully come back on another episode and I'm going to be collabing with these gentlemen on my own channel very, very soon. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I can't wait to collaborate with you guys. Uh, if you guys haven't, me and Ren did an awesome collaboration about what, almost a year ago now, talking about Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Oh, that is yeah. the best rant if you ever want to hear something. <laughs> Two men talking about how Anakin looks like a pedophile. Get on yes. it. <laughs> but uh, Cody, where can they find you out and what's your favorite film in the Conjuring universe? Okay, well, first, I find it funny that you say Anakin looks like a pedophile because remember, Padme was like, what, 16 years older than Anakin? It doesn't matter. The <laughs> way he looked at her, the way he looked at her, man. That's true. That's true. It's very creepy, very wrong. And Attack of the Clones needs to burn in a bus fire. But, guys, my favorite film in the Conjuring universe is still the first one. I think the first one is brilliant. I think it's a masterpiece of, of horror 
of horror making. But of course, when I'm not here doing the Sweet Film Podcast with Zach, you guys can also find me with Zach hosting a little game show called Entertainment Wars. Episode 2 is up right now, so you should go check that out. And you can also check me on my own YouTube channel. Just look for Cody Curtis up the YouTube search bar. Should be the first name that pops up. You can also find me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and a little movie reactionary app called Stardust. Either search underscore Cody underscore Curtis or just Cody Curtis. You'll be able to contact me on there let's get a conversation started awesome thank you so much guys for joining us as before i get going uh you guys find me at sandwich on films down below or on this youtube channel of course at zach pope also let me tell you my favorite conjuring film probably the conjuring one but i'm gonna be a little bit different and say annabelle creation just why not wow i like being weird but i i, I mean it's probably conjuring but i gotta mention i gotta give some love to annabelle creation but thank you so much ren for joining us cody of course thank thanks you. for being a, a great host with me and this is the sweet film podcast so of course until next time you guys all stay classy and have a sweet rest of your day